after a night on anchor, it was back on the water to continue learning the basics of sailing. Prepare to jive. I am ready. Prepare to jive and jive. Jiving. Jive ho. Jive ho. If you look at your wind indicator, as the wind passes behind us, you feel everything click over to the other side of the boat. Yeah. Now we're sailing, and since I hauled that clue center line to mast, all yeah. I have to do now is release this side, and we're back on a perfect trim on the other side. So there's not a lot of work of, as it lost, release it, haul it in like you would on a tack, because yeah. we're getting that jib sheet pre prepped and ready so we don't have to touch it. All we have to focus on is that mainsail, which we don't have up because we're running behind 19 knots of wind. We're wearing a Type 5 inflatable um, PFD. What that means is when they get fully submerged in water, they'll automatically inflate via a CO2 cartridge. If it doesn't auto-inflate, we have a pull cord that we can pull. And if it still doesn't inflate when we're in the water, we can undo the Velcro and unroll the, the inner uh, inflatable lining and blow it up with a mouth tube. It was a short day of sailing because there was a storm on the radar for later in the day. That makes it a great time to practice docking procedures. Put me in forward gear. I got it. Run that back to that cleat. Now turn the wheel hard to your right. Yep. That's good there. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you guys. Since we were done on the water, chart plotting and navigation seemed like the right thing to do. 15. So we'll sell to our, you know, let's sell to 15. I like 15 better. 21, 15, so that's 24. Nice. How far is that? I just took uh, the ASA 101 written test multiple choice 98 percent 98 is that considered Holy passing of course <laughs> yeah just a silly mistake the tack is the forward bottom point of a sail the clue is the back or the aft point of bottom point of a sail they really the only so aft point of a sail jib sail, what do you tie into the clue into the clue goes to your jib sheet very good on a main sail what do you tie into the clue in, on a main sail you tie your uh, uh, out haul into your clue very good. What is the outhaul tension? Your outhaul tension, what is it? What is it? What part of the sail does it tension? Oh, uh, it tensions the foot. I was hoping for a perfect hundred, but... Two more tests to go. I didn't get it. So we'll have a flood current that brings in the, the water that raises the water level. Um, all of this is pulled from the gravitational pull from the moon, and then some of it's from the sun. So the two tides that we're going to worry about are spring tides. Captain, what you uh, hooking up there? So what we're going to do is we're going to run our jack lines. Jack lines are going to give us a safe part to tether to our boat. It's a solid, durable nylon strap. Um, then we're going to tether from our jack line. Uh, we'll use this end to the jack line, and then this is going to hook onto our safety harness or our Type 5 PFD. It's got a little safety clip on it. Uh, push that in, open that up. You're all set. I can come around. Anywhere on my boat safely without worrying about falling in. This spring line is slack, so I'm gonna cast it off now. Ready? All right, cast off the bow. Throw life saving devices, we'll throw cushions, um, and at the same time, you're gonna be bearing away to a beam reach. Man overboard! Man overboard! So I'll bear away to a beam. Reach, yep. And then you're gonna get four to six boat lengths from our victim. Then you're gonna tack through the wind and fall down to a broad reach. Once you get on the broad reach, I'm gonna roll up that head sail to lose your speed. And then you're gonna get, you're gonna point about three boat lengths down from them. Turn up on a close reach. We're gonna pick them up on the leeward side of our boat, and we're gonna ease our mainsail to slow down those last three boat lengths to our victim. Go ahead and steady on that course. Steer to port. 
But now we're on that beam reach and we're sailing past them. Yep. And we're going way too fast. So let's steady on a beam reach and we're going to do another pickup. Now slowly start turning towards them. To control your turn and your movement, keep turning. We're going to pick them up on our port side. And now I can slow your boat speed. But he's in the van. Now we get up to them. Now we're going to head dead into the wind. And we're going to be able to pick them up. Our main is completely luffing. Now straighten out that force. Steer to force slightly. And your spotter's giving you the direction on where to go, so steer to port. And we have a near perfect pickup. We're still moving a little bit, but if we had a line or a rope, it's not enough drag, but we can walk them back to our stern liner or get them a rope. And our boat is, our uh, mainsail is still luffing, so we dropped all of our boat speed. Uh -huh. And I could even turn it into the wind now a little bit. Exactly. Or you and, can heave too. Yeah. Heave just too. with the freeboard of our boat. And then bring them back down to the transom. And walk them back to the stern, the uh, the swim ladder. Nice. All right. Ready? And jive home. Haul it in, 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 and he's back, he's back, he's back, he's back. You want to let it out quickly. Oh, we got it open. You want to leave a wrap on, but let it out quickly. So I want to go to starboard. There you go. So hold that course. Next up was to get familiar with the mechanics of the boat. <laughs> All right, so we'll start with cooling system. Um, everything starts right here. Um, and then this is our muffler and it goes out. This is what keeps everything lubricated by hand to try to release it. Hot, it's under pressure. We pump the oil out of this with a hand pump. And you have a little manual lever over here. This actual mechanism is the, the pump itself and that's what's draining that bill. Another uh, intake strainer. And that's your knot meter. I've never actually thought about where the knot meter gauge works, which is crazy. Use your GPS because your knot meter can be reading six knots, even though you have a three knot head current, and you're only moving three knots. The boat feels like it's actually moving over that water at six knots. So that's just your uh, AC compressor, so it sucks us more vent pipe. Storage, V8. So Do you know which holding tank is? Yeah, that's your fresh water. And we'd go inside, hold down that macerator button. Man, it's just chopping stuff up. It's just, yeah, left it a little bit. Food and food packaging. Uh, chopped up to finer than one inch at three miles. If you think you can do uh, like your your cardboards and glasses and stuff at 12 miles, but honestly, yeah. you know it's we we're environmentally conscious enough to say I think I can haul my stuff in. Today on Good Eats, the <laughs> chicken. <laughs> Good morning. It's another beautiful day. About to go do some sailing. Uh, we got one more day after this. Anchored here last night. Slept like a baby. After just a few days, I really felt like I was starting to get a handle on sailing. As we were stopped for lunch, the Coast Guard decided to come and uh, pay us a visit. Two across! Three across! Uh, how you guys doing today? We're gonna go over all your safety equipment to make uh, sure you guys are in compliance with all federal laws and regulations. Uh, can I see your uh, driver's license and boat registration? Kevin, are you running commercial or not? <laughs> recreational. We're going to school. Okay. So this is actually Oh, a... are you the school out of St. Andrews? That's me. <laughs> Get off the boat. We're not doing this. Well. You ever need us on channel 16? <laughs> Stay safe out there. You do. Alright, you guys have a good one. Back to learning. Now we can steer our boat and watch that wheel spinning. Give me a good pull. Slide it. We headed out into the Gulf of Mexico where the wind was stronger than I have ever experienced while sailing. All right, ready?
Back in the bay, it was time to practice the Mediterranean mole. To haul a grounded boat off the bottom using an anchor is called kedging off, which is exactly what we decided to do, and lucky for us, we already had an anchor out because of the med moor. With a mix of kedging, motoring, and pushing really hard, we were able to refloat our boat. We celebrated with a quick dip, and then I took a test for the ASA 103 course. Dylan's final score. Dylan received a 96. Basically, if you're sitting on a single anchor, you can raise your mainsail while you're pointed up into the wind. You get sailing on any point of sail or any close reach on either tack. Once you get sailing, you're sailing away with your anchor line taut on your bow, and then you tack through the wind. And as you tack through the wind onto your next either port or starboard tack, that anchor line goes slack, so you have somebody on the bow hauling in all that anchor line. They want to haul in until the sails are about to fill in again on that new point of sail or that new tack and then they'll cleat it off. As they cleat it off, the bow line will pull tight and the boat will sail along with the tight bow line. And then you can tack again a second time. It's usually enough line left in the water that the boat will pull the anchor out um, with the momentum of the boat going through the tack. Get a little bit of prop off and turn the turn around. And now we're gonna go into reverse and I'll drop that anchor. All right. We have to back up to it a little closer so we're about 100 feet, that'll work. So right about there. Uh, we got about a boat length. We're about 10 feet. Let's get it, hold it. Here. Yeah. That's good. Watch, because you just step here. Okay. Mediterranean moor. Gulf of Mexico! Basically, I was working in corporate America um, and just working 60 to 80 hours a week and uh, really got burned out and really started valuing time more than money. And I was already a sailor and that was the passion that I was looking for. And I saw a reef runner sailing for sale and just everything seemed to click. Everything just seemed perfect. Um, I called the owner right away. We had a real good conversation. Came to visit the school. Everything just fell in line. Next thing I know, I'm living in Florida and I sail sailboats for a living. So Dylan, what just happened to your clothes? Well, um, I wanted to fly the drone to get a sweet shot of this like Mediterranean moor. I was taken off from basically like right here, uh, which I've done before, but it was a little further up, so it was like this. But since it's not level, it just kicked on and just front flipped into the water and sunk to the bottom. So I had to jump in and rescue the drone. Whenever I brought it up, all the lights were on, the battery is still working, it seemed to still be working fine. The last skill to learn was how to pick up a mooring, boy. Ten feet. Got the pennant. Very good. Two boat length. One boat length. Twenty feet probably. Fifteen feet. Ten feet. Five feet. Three feet from the hook. Got it. Oh, dropped it. Uh, lost it. Got it. Motor and home, boys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dock on that fuel dock under sail. Go ahead and start our motor just in case. This is just a safety measure. We're not gonna we're gonna not use it though. There we go, that's good. Straighten up more. Nice work. Very nice. And then now steer your wheel this way. Turn that way to get your bow back in the way. There you go. We're gonna hit that. Okay. okay. Alright, that's good. Put it in neutral. Got it. You gotta live your dreams. Um, it's there's nothing more important than life than capitalizing on the time that you have now. ASA 104, Dylan got a 92 on.
Very good. That's a course that most people don't get A on. Thanks for watching this series. I really appreciate it. Thank you most of all to the patrons for supporting the channel. Definitely appreciate you. If you guys are interested in learning how to sail or anything about sailing, contact Jeremy at Reef Runners. And uh, now I'm headed to go hop on a ship to cruise across the Atlantic to uh, go sail the Mediterranean. So I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, Peace. over and out. Have a great week! Uh, go to rrsailing.com um, and come visit Reef Runner Sailing. We have a, a Facebook page, an Instagram page, a YouTube channel. Just go to rrsailing.com and that's the start. Um, or you can email Jeremy at rrsailing.com or you can reach me at 850-890-1120.